Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds at Motorhome Rehab Ranch. I always say this at the end of the video, but guys, send me send me uh, comments. Tell me what you think about these videos because that's how I build more more uh, more videos and answer questions. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do some some uh, book learning. Uh, we're not going to be in a, underneath the motorhome or any of that. We're going to do some book learning on vapor lock. <clears throat> vapor lock. What's vapor lock? Driving along, everything's happy. Everybody's happy. Everything's doing great. And then, that's how it always starts. That's how the phone calls start. You're driving along, and you pull off the highway. And you come to a stop, and you go to take off, and it it stumbles. Now, don't push harder. Don't push harder on the gas. Back off the gas. I had this one guy bought a coach, and he he just could not get that. Every time he would pull up to a, a, a toll plaza, he was up in New Jersey, it would start to stumble, and he'd put his foot down on it, and what would happen? It would die. Then he'd get he'd get flustered and try to start try to start it up, start it up. He'd kill the battery. After blocking three toll plazas, he gave up, parked it in a in a lot, and flew home. When you have this happen, you pull off a ramp. <clears throat> what happens is the heat has been blowing through the engine. You slow down, the heat builds up. Now, when the heat builds up, it causes a vapor lock. What do you do? You back your foot off. Let it catch up. Let it idle. Let that heat get out of there. Give it a little gas. If it goes stumbles, back off. Let it idle. Maybe get on the side of the road, but give it a second. Get the heat to come down in the engine compartment, and she'll take off. Make sense? All right. But what is this thing called vapor lock? What causes our engines to vapor lock. Well, it's not just our engines. If you set up conditions, you'll have a vapor lock. Or you'll have something happen in any situation. If the conditions are right, it will happen. So what are the conditions? One, the fuel has to get hot, too hot. And so why, do, why is this a problem now? Is it, is it global warming? <laughs> no, well, maybe. But the problem is the fuel that we have today has a lower boiling point. And I was uh, listening to a, a video here recently. I really do dove down into the rabbit hole about that. And whether it's because it's ethanol, alcohol, and water, or whether it's the fuel formulations they're using now for winter and summer blend and all this, it's, it's a pretty deep uh, rabbit hole. But the bottom line is our fuel has a lower boiling point. In other words, it will, it will boil at a lower temperature. Now, how do you stop that? Think about this. You want to you cook beans. And you want to cook the beans at a higher temperature than the, than the water will boil. So what do you do? You put it in a pressure cooker. Put a little thing on the top, you know. And it heats up, heats up, and it'll start, boop, right? That means when it hits a certain temperature, and if you look at the little block on the top, there's a temperature on there. They've got different different sizes, and when it reaches that point, it will blow off uh, the pressure. That's that's a, uh, uh, how you boil the beans. That's how you cook beans. Same thing in this engine. If you can pressurize the fuel, if it sits, hits a certain temperature and the, and the fuel starts to boil, and it boils, if you can give it more pressure because that's one of the conditions that causes boiling you can give it more pressure the vapor lock will go away and it'll it'll touch fuel okay so how can we not have the fuel get hot okay All right we have our two tanks i know don't look at my right my stuff here All right fuel comes off the top goes to an AB solenoid switch, comes into here. You look under your frame, you'll see it. Comes out of here with a single feed. And this goes up to the engine. Now, fuel comes to our motor 
like that. They got a mechanical fuel pump right here. And it feeds it feeds the fuel to the carburetor. Now, how does this mechanical fuel pump know to only feed about six and a half psi of pressure to that carburetor? I mean, how does it know that? The way it does that, the mechanical fuel pump is a diaphragm pump and is connected to an arm that the arm pulls this in and out. It creates that's that's the pump. It's a diaphragm pump. Right. Well, what they do to to get that pump to realize where six and a half PSI is, they put a spring that's connected to here. That when this thing sees about six and a half PSI of pressure against it, the spring starts to move and the diaphragm stops. So when you hit six and a half PSI of pressure, this diaphragm no longer pushes pressure until the pressure in the line gets below six and a half PSI. This thing stops. Well, that's a problem. Now, <clears throat> what you could do is you could put a electric fuel pump uh, in line, would push the fuel, and this will be a higher pressure, and it wouldn't it uh, uh, it wouldn't vapor lock. That's one way. There's another way you could put a electric fuel pump on your auxiliary tank that when you get this condition, you turn on this pump and it pressurizes the fuel in the line, which drops uh, the, the uh, well, well, it raises the boiling point, which which in turn drops the vapor lock. So having having an electric fuel pump switched by the dash by the switch up on the dash that says uh, main main tank auxiliary tank. If you hook the electric fuel pump to the AB solenoid power, when you flip the AB solenoid right here, it goes a pass through through the solenoid. Fuel comes from the rear tank, which is your main tank, through and goes straight in. When you push that switch on the dash, it says auxiliary tank. This AB solenoid switches to this tank. And if you put a pump here and power it off the AB solenoid, when you push that button, boom, you'll have more pressure here, and that will push through the vapor lock. We've known this for 10, 15 years, and this, this is a good, good uh, way to fix a vapor lock. They say, well, how can we, uh, what's another way, what's another Band-Aid to stop the fuel from uh, boiling? Another way to do it, remember down here we talked about when this, when this, uh, when this uh, diaphragm pump hits six and a half PSI, the spring starts to move and the pump stops. Well, on what's called a three port mechanical fuel pump, three port pump, they'll have them in Napa or anywhere. Application 76 Tornado with a 455, tell them you want a three port mechanical pump. Now what a three port pump does, fuel comes into the pump. This arm is connected to the pump diaphragm all the time pumps all the time doesn't stop but when when the pressure reaches six and a half there's a check valve right here that will will shunt the pressure through the check valve and dump it back to the fuel tank three port pump is a more reliable pump it's it's designed for high heat situations because the check valve does the selection not turning off the pump Pump's always running, so it's always pushing fuel. The fuel is always moving in this line, which means it doesn't stay there long enough to get hot. A three-port mechanical fuel pump will, will solve one of the problems. This is a great Band-Aid for it. The first Band-Aid we find, found was pressurizing the fuel line right here. Both of these together are two of the, the Band-Aids that we put in if you're going to run a carburetor. Now, if you're going to run a, a, a fuel injection, electric fuel pumps pressurize. Chances are, if you have an electric fuel pump in line, it's not going to vapor lock. Now, a lot of people say, well, let's just get rid of the mechanical pump entirely. Let's just do away with this thing entirely. Let's just put an electric fuel pump right here. So no matter what we select, it will pull main, auxiliary, it'll pull it, and it'll push it. Now, that is a way, and a lot of people have their coaches set up that way. You turn on the key, 
that your fuel pump comes on. Same way as a, a fuel injection. The highest failure rate devices in electronics are motors and relays. There's a motor right here. If you run a full electric fuel pump without the mechanical fuel pump on the carburetor, bring an electric fuel pump extra. And mount the electric fuel pump on the outside of the rail so you can get to it. Why is that? Because on the side of the road, you may have to be changing it with trucks going by. You need to access that electric fuel pump and you need to be able to change it with a new one and keep going. Because your entire motorhome is relying on a highest failure rate device. Make sense? If you're running an electric fuel pump, have an extra. And have it on the outside of the frame rail so you can get to it. Now, there are a lot of other issues with the fuel tank. We know about that. Uh, all we're talking about here is vapor lock. We also have a problem with return. It feels slow. Uh, the two tanks, uh, there are several things. Vapor lock is the biggest one, the one that will hit me. The most of you, the most of the time. Okay. What's, the, what's the easiest way to not have to deal with vapor lock? Back off. When you come off the highway, don't worry about going fast for a little bit. You may even want to pull over to let the heat dissipate and take off. You wouldn't have to do any of this stuff <clears throat> if you do that. But that in the real world, that's really not that, that's, that, that possible. So to have a countermeasure, to have an electric pump that when you start to buck, you can push that, that auxiliary uh, fuel switch and add the, mechanic, the electric fuel pump, and you will find it will take it out. It's been that way for years. It's a wonderful thing. Matter of fact, in the summer, I just turn it on and leave it on. Well, if you're in town, you want to leave it on. Because you get out on the highway, things will cool down. And if you leave the pump on all the time on the highway, then when you do have a vapor lock, which remember, it could even form with the electric fuel pump. But if that happens, you won't have a countermeasure. Okay. I do it every time I get off the highway in the toll booth. If it's a hot day, I'll run with it in town. This is a great feature. All right. Well, look, guys. I've had, there have been several videos about this stuff. I wanted to uh, reiterate the fact that if you are running a carburetor, you need to have a countermeasure of some type or you may face vapor lock. Now, there's another thing you can, you can get between the carburetor and the mechanical fuel pump. There's a lot of heat up there. You can get a Teflon line braided stainless fuel line up to the carburetor, which also makes it easy to take off but it has a 700 degree pyro shield on it. So if you have heat coming over the top of the motor causing vapor lock between the mechanical fuel pump and the carburetor, this line will, will solve that. Where do you get that? Applied has that uh, in, uh, in California. Uh, give them a call if you uh, need their number. It's 800-752-7502. Talk to Jim or Nick, tell them, hey, for me, tell them you want that insulated fuel line. That's another thing that, that is very helpful. But if you're running a, a carburetor, understand that the fuels today are different than it used to be, and you need to do some cutting. Call me. I'll help you through it. That's what we're doing here. All right? Thanks a lot. Hit like and share and all that stuff. For any chance, this will be in the, uh, in the database. So when you start having vapor lock or somebody says, why is this thing shut down when I get off the highway? Here's your sign. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.